There are many ways to see Paris, by foot, by boat, and now by virtual reality. Flyview's virtual reality tours enables users to fly over Paris's monuments. The guests arrive in a lobby resembling an airport terminal with check-in counters, flight attendants, and screens announcing upcoming flights. They are then invited to climb on a jetpack where they will put on virtual reality helmets and off they go, propelled into the skies of the French capital. The devices synchronize the views with the jetpack's movement, taking off, flying forward, stopping for panoramic views, moving sideways and dropping down next to a monument to create an immersive experience. The journey takes the users from the Place de la Concorde to the second floor of the Eiffel Tower, past the Arc de Triomphe, and towards the Champs Elysees. Visitors also get a bird's eye view of the Seine and its famous bridges before ending up on the top of the Notre Dame Cathedral. Around 20 monuments filmed with a drone equipped with seven cameras can be explored during the 13 minute trip. Each virtual reality experience is unique to the user. It was more of an adventure than a game. You can discover Paris and all its monuments. You have some sensations. You go up and down. It's really enjoyable. And you can discover Paris as you've never seen it before. Flyview founder who began the project three years ago said one of the biggest hurdles was to secure authorization to film Paris's monuments with a drone. Flyview is an experience of flying over Paris in virtual reality with a view of the city's monuments in 360 degrees from above. It's unique. It does not exist anywhere else. He said his company was the first to have clearance to film in such close proximity to the sites. It is not a 3D reconstruction. We had all the flights authorization and the shots were done with drones with a special set of cameras. A Flyview ticket costs 15 euros, about 18.6 US dollars. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Elias, the new language teacher in a school in southern Finland, has endless patience for repetition, never makes a pupil feel embarrassed for asking a question and can even do the Gangnam style dance. Well, it is fun, interesting and exciting and I am a Bisha. Elias is also a language learning solution comprising a humanoid robot and mobile application, currently being trialed in a year-long pilot program alongside a maths teaching robot at a primary school in Finland's third largest city. The robot is able to understand and speak 23 languages. With a robot, kids can practice language without fear of making mistakes. Robot is uh, easy to approach. Being equipped with software makes the robot understand students' requirements and helps it behave in a way that encourages learning. It communicates in Finnish or English, recognizing the pupils' skill levels and automatically adjusting the questions accordingly, giving feedback to the teacher about possible problems. I think the new curriculum, the main idea is to get the kids involved and get them motivated and get them, you know, make them active. And I see Elias as one of the tools to, you know, get different kind of, of practice and different kind of activities into the classroom. So in that sense, I think robots and coding the robots and working with them is definitely um, something that is according to the new curriculum and something that we teachers need to be open-minded about. Elias, the language robot, which stands around a foot tall, is based on SoftBank's humanoid interactive companion robot, with software developed by Utilias, a developer of educational software for social robots. 
The Matt's robot dubbed Overbot, which is a small blue machine around 10 inches high which resembles an owl, was developed by Finnish AI robots. The purpose of the pilot project is to see if these robots can improve the quality of teaching. Using robots in classrooms is not new, as teaching robots have been used in the Middle East, Asia and the United States. But modern technologies such as cloud services and 3D printing are allowing smaller startup companies to enter the sector. Despite their skills in language and mathematics, however, the robot's inability to maintain discipline amongst a class of primary school children means that for the time being at least, the human teacher's jobs are safe. At a seemingly ordinary nursing home in downtown Tokyo, an unusual leader was in charge during an afternoon exercise routine, Pepe, a humanoid robot. The elderly, all smiles in front of the white, sleek, talking robot, moved along to its musical instructions, raising their arms and closing their fists. On a different floor, the elderly mingled with Sony Corp's pet robot dog, Ibo, an intelligent system company's Robot Seal Paro, cuddling and petting the robots that moved like their real life counterparts. When I pet these robots, they move like real living animals. I think they're so cute. Up to 40 elderly people live in Shintomi. 20 robots were introduced to the facility in 2013 after receiving funds from the Tokyo Metropolitan Government under a program aimed at overcoming labor shortages. As people aged 65 or older account for 27.2% of the total population in Japan, the highest on record, the country faces a labor issue, which is set to grow to almost 40% by 2065. The robots not only keep the elderly company in an attempt to alleviate dementia, but also help the workers carry out daily tasks that can be physically taxing. For other elderly people in Japan, such robots were like family members with irreplaceable memories. 63-year-old Yoichi Suzuki purchased Sonny's Aibo when his father fell ill, in the hopes that the mini-robot dog would keep his father company as his health deteriorated. After his father passed away, Suzuki now hopes his bedridden mother will take a liking to the robot. Even if it's just a small percentage of what humans do, by having robots such as Paro help with the work, there's a greater possibility that they can reduce the workload. Stories like Suzuki's are what motivates Hiroshi Funabashi to repair old, outdated models of Aibo. Some experts say such reliance and attachments to robots will rise as Japan, which is becoming increasingly grey, faces a serious labor shortage.